In this video, you're going to learn how to do the transformation of parent functions. And this is going to be an introduction uh, to doing this. And the first thing we want to talk about is what are the parent functions and what are some key points that you might want to know uh, for those parent functions. And then we're going to talk about some of the transformations and then we're going to get into four examples where we can practice. So the first thing is you might want to take a screenshot of this. This is what you're going to want to really be familiar with. You might want to memorize it and refer back to it. So go ahead and take a screenshot. I'll try to get out of the way here. Okay, you got it. Okay, so now let's talk about the different types of parent functions. A parent function is kind of like the core function when everything else is kind of removed from it. So if we think of this y equals x squared, we call that a quadratic and it has this u-shaped graph. It's a parabola and you're going to want to know these key points. These are some easy numbers. All I'm doing is I'm squaring them and that's how I'm getting these y values. I pick small numbers because they're easier to work with. You've got your cubic function, kind of looks like this shape here, and you can see I'm using a couple negative, zero, and a couple positive, and then I'm cubing them. The square root function, notice I'm picking these numbers 0, 1, 4, 9, because they're easy to take the square root of. We get 0, 1, 2, 3. Notice the square root function just goes in that one direction there. And then the cube root function, you can see this 3 tells us it's a cube root. I picked a few negative and a few positive and zero, and I picked numbers that are easy to take the cube root of. The reciprocal function, it approaches the x and y axis. These are vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And I'm picking a couple negative, zero, and a couple positive. Of course, we can't divide by zero. That's undefined. That's why we're getting that vertical asymptote there. And then the absolute value function, remember, I picked a couple negative, zero, and a couple positive. The absolute value always makes those outputs positive. We get this real sharp V-type shape as opposed to the parabola, which is more of a U-shaped graph. Okay, so those are the basic graphs. Now, we're going to be working with transformations when they're in this form. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, you can see if I cover up this h and this k and this a, I'm really just left with x squared. That's the parent function or the core function. But let's talk about what do the a, the h, and the k do? Well, if you take the absolute value of this number here in front, if it's greater than 1, so for example, if this was a 2 or a 3 or a 4, we call that a vertical stretch. So it's like you're multiplying all the y values by that a number and it's going to stretch it, making it go up faster. Okay, you're pulling it in the y direction. Now if that a value, the absolute value of that a value is between 0 and 1, say for example if it was a half or a third or a fourth, then we call it a vertical shrink. So we're like squeezing it towards the x-axis. So we're multiplying all the y values by this number. So if it's a half, we multiply all the numbers in our table, the y values here, by a half. Not the x values, just the y values because it's a vertical shrink. And if the number itself, the a value itself, is negative, meaning less than zero, what it does is it takes all these positive y values and makes them the opposite, which reflects it over the x-axis. You can multiply all these y values by negative one to get the new y-coordinates. And then the h value, that's the number here that's grouped with the x. Now, whatever is grouped with the x, now, when I say grouped with the x, sometimes students get a little confused, it's like in the parentheses or underneath the square root or kind of like in the denominator here or inside the absolute value bars. It's like grouped with that x value. It's going to have what we call the opposite effect, the quote unquote opposite effect. What do I mean by that? Well, if it's x minus 1, we're actually going to shift to the graph not negative 1 but positive 1 to the right. If this was x plus 1, then I would actually shift it the opposite way, see negative 1 to the left. So remember, whatever is grouped with the x has like the opposite effect. And then if it's not grouped with the x, like this k value here, that's going to shift the graph up or down. It has the same effect, meaning if k was 5, I would shift this graph up 5. If it was minus 5, I'd shift it down 5. Now keep in mind, if it's grouped with the x, it's affecting the x direction, the horizontal direction, which means that if I was shifting right 1, I would add 1 to all these x coordinates here in my table. Or I could just pick up the graph and move it 1 to the right. But over here with this k value, that's affecting the vertical direction. That means I'm going to be adding or subtracting that k value from these y coordinates. We're going to do four examples, so you're going to see how this works. But again, take a screenshot and you're going to refer back to this. So let's go ahead and dive into those examples now. Okay, number one, we've got y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 3. So what is the parent function? Well, again, if we cover up the 1, the 3, and the 2, you can see we're left with x squared 
That's our parent function, our quadratic function. It's a U-shaped graph, it's a parabola. And remember these key numbers, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. I'm just squaring them here to get four, one, zero, one, four. But now we're gonna talk about how do I get the actual graph written here? When you do the order of transformations, and they're in this form like this, an easy way to do it is just to work from left to right, okay? So what we could do is we could do the vertical stretch or shrink first, then we could shift it left or right, then we could shift it up or down. Now, you can also do this uh, horizontal shift left or right, and then the vertical stretch, but you always wanna make sure when it's in this form that you do this K value or the vertical shift up or down last, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna get a different uh, graph in some situations. So let's talk about that here. So if I look at this two here, I can see this is greater than one, which tells me it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two. When I think about vertical, I'm thinking the y direction. See this y-axis direction? So I'm gonna multiply all these y-coordinates by two, giving us eight, two, zero, two, and eight. All I'm doing is multiplying by two, cross out the old y values. Then we see, okay, this minus one has the opposite effect because it's grouped with the x. It's gonna shift it in the x-axis direction. But instead of negative one, it's gonna go right one. Now when I think about right one, I think about my x values, I'm adding one to these x values. So I'm just gonna cross out the old ones. Lastly, the plus three, it's not grouped with the x, that's gonna affect the y direction. It has the same effect. The plus three is gonna shift it up three. That's affecting the y values. Y controls up and down. So I'm gonna add three to all these y coordinates. Okay, now let's go ahead and plot these points here. We've got negative 111, which is kind of going off my graph here. So let's go to 0, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've got 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. I've got 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I've got 3, 11, which is going off the graph here a little bit. So you can see, here's our parabola. Notice it's a little bit narrower because we stretched it vertically by a factor of two. It's been shifted right one and up three, and that's our graph. Now, if this was a negative two, the negative would have taken the original graph and reflected it over the x-axis, making it open down. But in this case, positive two, it's still opening up, we're just stretching it. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for number two, we've got y equals negative one-half times the quantity x plus two cubed minus four. What's the parent function here? Well, again, if you cover up the two, the negative four, the negative one-half, you see how you're left with x cubed? So this is a cubic parent function, and that's why I'm picking these numbers in my table here. Negative two cubed is negative eight, negative one cubed is negative one, zero cubed is zero, one cubed is one, two cubed is eight. Now let's look at the transformation. So when it's in this form, like the second one here, we can work from left to right, or we could do the H and then the A and then the K, but make sure we do that K last. So in this case, I can see that we've got a negative here, and what the negative does is it reflects it over the x-axis. Okay, it's gonna make all the y values the opposite, which means I'm gonna multiply all these y values by negative one. So that's gonna make this positive, positive, zero would stay zero, negative, negative. Now the one half, okay, because that's between zero and one, that's gonna be a vertical shrink by a factor of one half. When we think of a vertical, we think of it's affecting the y's, so I'm gonna multiply all these y values by one half. Cross out the old ones. The plus two, it's grouped with the x, which remember, when it's grouped with the x, it's gonna affect the x values, left and right, the horizontal direction, but remember it has the quote unquote opposite effect. Plus two means it's gonna go negative two or left two. So what I can do is I can subtract two from all of these x values, cross out the old ones, and lastly, the minus four, that has the same effect. It's not grouped with the x, it's affecting the y values. Minus four is gonna shift it down four, so I'm gonna subtract four from each of these uh, y values here. Cross out the old ones. Okay, now let's go ahead and plot these and see what we get. So we get negative four, zero, which is right about here. We get negative three and a half, uh, negative three, negative three and a half, which is right about here. We get negative two, negative four, which is right about here. And negative one, negative four and a half, which is right about here. And then zero, negative eight, which is two, three, four, five, six, seven, somewhere right about here. So the graph's gonna look roughly 
like this, okay? Now remember, the original graph looked like this, but because of the negative, we reflected it, so instead of going up to the right, now it's going down to the right, and then we're shifting it left. Well, then we're, we shrunk it a little bit, vertical shrink by a half, then we shifted it left two and down four. Let's look at number three now. This one, if we cover up the three and the one, we're dealing with a square root graph, right? So this is our square root graph, which normally, remember, looks like this. But now let's do the transformation. So the three, it's a vertical stretch by a factor of three, which means we're gonna multiply all the y values by three. Cross out those old y values. There's nothing grouped with the x. There's nothing with that x underneath that square root. So it's not shifting the graph left or right. But the plus one is going to shift the graph up one. Remember, if it's not grouped with the x, it's affecting the y values. Plus one goes up one. If it was negative one, it would go down one. It has the same effect. So I'm just going to add one to all these y coordinates. So now all I have to do is plot 0, 1, which would be right here. A 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. 4, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's easier on graph paper, but we get the right idea here. And then 9, 10 is somewhere over there. So basically you can see there's our graph that's been transformed. Let's take a look at one more example. Okay, if you're getting the hang of this, you might want to pause the video and see if you can try this one on your own first, and then we'll go through it together and you can kind of see how you did. So the first thing would be to analyze what is our parent function here? Well, you can see if I cover up the negative 2 and the 3, I'm left with y equals cube root of x. And some good numbers, remember, for cube root of x from that first part of the video would be negative 8. Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Cube root of 0 is 0. Cube root of 1 is 1. And cube root of 8 is 2. But now let's look at this. So a negative, that reflects it over the x-axis. It makes all the y values the opposite. So I'm going to multiply all these y values by negative 1. So that's going to change the signs. The 2 now, see when you look at the a value, you want to take the absolute value. See absolute value? That's this one right here we're working with. And you can see the absolute value of this is going to be positive 2, which is greater than 1. So we know it's a vertical stretch. So we're pulling it in the y direction, the y-axis direction. And that's going to multiply all these y values by 2. So that's going to be 4, 2, 0, negative 2, and negative 4. Now you might be saying, Mario, couldn't you just do it all in one fell swoop and multiply all the y values by negative 2? You could do that. You get the same result. I just did it in steps. I did the negative and then I did the, the 2. Okay, now the plus 3, you see that's grouped with the x. It's underneath this radical here, this cube root. When it's grouped with the x, remember it has the opposite effect. So you would think, intuitively, you would say, well, plus 3, hmm, that, that means like I would go to the right 3, like 1, 2, 3, positive 3 to the right. But this one has the opposite effect. It's shifting it left three, which means that I'm gonna subtract three from the x values, okay? So this is gonna be negative 11, negative four, negative three, uh, negative two, and um, five, right? Cross out the old x value. So now we've got our coordinates, we can graph our graph. Keep in mind, the original graph, the y equals cube root of x, looks like that. So negative 11, four, by the way, notice there's not a k value, so it hasn't shifted up or down. So k value is like zero here. So let's plot these points. Negative 11, 4. Might go off our graph a little bit. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right about here. And then we've got negative 4, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2. Right about there. Negative 3, 0. Right about there. Negative 2, negative 2 and 5, negative 4, 3, 4, 5, or somewhere right about here. Okay, so you can see our graph looks something like that, roughly. And notice it normally goes up to the right, but because of the negative, we reflected it, so it's going kind of down to the right like that. The 2 is stretching it vertically, and then we shifted it left 3. So great job. There's a lot involved with transformations. If you want to learn more, and go deeper into some more challenging ones, just uh, even beyond these, follow me over to that video right there, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.